This is Barbara, the deaconess of the church. She is here to retrieve the holy lyre to Hamel. May the animal Archon protect you. I'm not really in a position to speak compared to our acting Grand Master, but I still want to thank you all on behalf of all of Mondstadt for your assistance. Fortunately, everything was resolved peacefully. I can't imagine how an all-out war between the military and the dragon would have ended. Now the Fatui have no choice but to keep their mouths shut. They must be annoyed that things didn't turn out as planned for them. This time, they even lost their best excuse to pressure the Knights of Favonius. Diplomatically speaking, they gained nothing, and on the contrary, simply proved just how vexatious they can be. Sounds like quite the story. So, did you bring the Holy Liar with you? We cannot ask you to keep defending the Liar forever. The Seneschal has been pressing me for a while now. We, uh, did bring it with us. Um, it's just... it's a little... Oh, don't worry. I'm not here to collect rent. The church has always received special funding. should get going. That trick I used to repair the Holy Liar. <laughs> I mean, the magic I used isn't going to hold forever, you know. What? <laughs> you poor bard! <laughs> hey, don't go! Last, Mondstadt's rodent ruler in the flesh. <laughs> Scurrying through the streets looking for leftovers? Mondstadt calls this a god? Resident rodent beats invasive vermin! <laughs> Don't you dare speak back to me, insolent bard. Absentee archon of Impotent you've become. That smirky wear looks out of place. Did you steal it from your master's face? <laughs> Should have held your tongue. <sighs> so, this is a gnosis. Wouldn't huh? be caught dead wearing this ugly thing in public. Beauty is a waste. <laughs> When the beholder has no taste. Venti! <laughs> well, we have what we came here for. Come, before our dear Favonian friends arrive. Leave nothing for them to find. <laughs> Exactly. I found you lying unconscious outside the cathedral and used my elemental powers to heal you. That bard awakened first, but strangely, my healing powers had almost no effect on him. This is the first time I've encountered such a patient. But he just said 
it's completely normal. And then got up and left the cathedral. He left? Already? Where'd he go? The symbol of Mondstadt's hero. That's what he said. I wanted to stop him, but Jean... Uh, I, I mean, Master Jean... Paimon remembers Venti healing under that tree before. It's probably due to the connection between Windrise and the animal Archon. Master Jean has figured it out as well, but we can't tell Barbara. The wind amongst the branches is good. I love the way it smells. <laughs> I said the exact same thing last time. <sighs> Why do I only say these things when I'm down on my luck? Ah, uh, so you noticed. <sighs> this isn't something I'm meant to discuss with ordinary people. But I suppose I can let you in on the secret. As you know, visions are external magical foci that only a small minority of people possess. They use these visions to channel elemental power. In truth... Every wielder of a vision is one who can attain godhood and ascend to Celestia. We call such people Allogenes. Allogenes? Paimon's never heard of them before. <laughs> That's because this is a secret that only Archons are privy to. We don't need primitive tools like visions. Instead, each Archon has an internal magical focus that resonates directly with Celestia itself. Known as a Gnosis. <laughs> it's just a glowing glass ball I carry around to- So who was that nasty woman who sent Paimon flying and stole your Gnosis? Her name is Signora, number eight of the Harbingers. She and the rest of the Harbingers have been given godlike executive authority by the Tsaritsa of Snejnaya, and with it, strength surpassing that of other mortals. The Tsaritsa of Snezhnaya? Isn't that... Indeed. She is one of the seven. The Tsaritsa who reigns from her winter palace, and the one person that the Fatui Harbingers all answer to. The seven don't always get along well, but still. I never thought that she would plot to steal another Archon's Gnosis. Uh, how should I put this? Five hundred years ago, I knew her well, but I can't say the same is true now. You see, a certain catastrophe happened five hundred years ago, and after that, she cut off all ties with me. But we can save discussion of the Cryo Archon and the Fatui for another day. If you seek the rest of the Seven, many difficulties lie ahead of you still. You should head for Mondstadt's neighboring nation of Liyue, the Geo Archon who reigns there unlike me, administrates his entire region personally. He only descends once every year to give his divine predictions, which set the direction for Liu for the rest of that year. Even so, it sounds like he works much harder than a certain someone, hmm? <laughs> In any case, this year's rite of dissension is soon to begin. If you miss it, you'll just have to wait another year. What? Oh, why didn't you tell us before? <sighs> well, then bye! We're going! One moment, Windborn Outlander. Yep. Traveler, as you set off on your journey once again, you must remember that the journey itself has meaning. The birds of Tevat, the songs in the cities, the Tsaritsa, her Fatui and the monsters, they are all part of your journey. The destination is not everything, so before you reach the end, keep your eyes open. Use the chance to take in the world around you. Great. So, that's that for the Animo Archon's admonishments. Back to Venti time. If you want to chat, now's the time. A bard stays not always in a single climb. Well then, best be off to Liyue. If the dissension ritual... <laughs>